Fly a fair nation. Fly a fair nation. Thank you for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. This episode was produced by Fly a Fair Nation and has been recorded at the Fan Production House. When a nigga calls you a faggot by J. Dodd. You gotta laugh at least once, like the pot calling the kettle, a more dangerous thing. When he spits in your mouth, you must swallow the sour hurt of anxiety. How your lips make him salivate. When he swings his fist, duck down and tackle him to the ground with soft kisses. When a nigga calls you a faggot, he's calling you by his first name. He's telling you about himself. His own fault line splitting his tongue, toxic and tender. He's crying for help from the bottom of the ocean. When it discharges from his throat, imagine it lands on the shores, of which your both bodies washed up when a nigga calls you a faggot. You still gotta call him brother. You still gotta pray he makes it home at night. When a nigga calls you a faggot by J. Dodd. (sighs) <sighs> um hey it's me i'm by myself because twin is in jamaica living a good life i want right to start now. off with a bunch of like random topics and things that uh news reports and just things i have saved in my phone for the longest that i just meant to speak on we are sad to see Doreen samuels from tvj news go like her last episode was a few weeks ago and her voice is so like synonymous with the nightly news i mean you know things happen she's probably a lady been around forever so good luck to her on all her endeavors but we're all very very sad to see her go i know we talked about this before me and twin they do have a gofundme now j flag um it's called rebuilding j flag it's there's a gofundme page for that for those who want to donate if you didn't know the um rainbow house the building broke down not broke down sorry it caught on fire the end of the year i think it was december 30th of last year and they do have a gofundme up now you guys are free to go donate it's gofundme.com slash rebuilding j flag everything is spelled properly two dollars five dollars fifty dollars a hundred dollars whatever you can just go out and donate to that in news of j flag and anything homosexual related follow Following all the things that we talked about in 2018, all the countries that decriminalize homosexuality, Angola has finally decriminalized homosexuality. That's a big win. That is that is huge. Just like every other country that has decriminalized homosexuality, that is huge. South Africa and around the world, everyone is celebrating LGBT. That you know they finally decided to decriminalize it. The changes came on Wednesday, January 23rd, as Angola's parliament adopted its first new penal code since it gained independence from Portugal in 1975 and removed the provisions inherited from its Portuguese colonizers. Now, according to the new penal law that aims to shore protection against sexual um, discrimination, those who discriminate against members of the LGBT community may be subject to a prison term of up to two years. So... Shout out to that. You know, that's always good. I mean, it's one thing to decriminalize the act of people just living their lives. But the fact that people who try to interfere with that, they get penalized for basically homophobia. Um, Some other news, (laughs) international news. St. Vincent and the Grenadines has decriminalized marijuana. So who knows? Maybe this year I'll smoke a little weed. (laughs) Um, that's a joke. Shout out to them, though. And for all the people who are like, wait, what? Yes, people, countries in the West Indies, it is illegal to smoke weed. I keep telling y'all this and people still fail to understand that despite the stigma against Jamaica and other islands in the Caribbean, like weed is not legal <laughs> unless it's been decriminalized. So I don't know what the stipulations are, if it's mar- mom medical or anything like that, but it's decriminalized. So shout out to them. Another big shout out goes out to Costa Rica. I'm flying through these, I know. But Costa Rica elects Latin America's first black female vice president. Yo, first black female vice president in the whole of Latin America? Like, Jesus Christ. So the people of Costa Rica elected Carlos Alvarado as the country's new president. And his running mate, Epsi Campbell Barr, has made history by becoming the first black female vice president in the Americas. Like, the whole of Latin America. So shout out to them, shout out to her. And you know, I mean, I'm here for all the positive news. I usually like to give bad news first, but eh, I was in a good mood. Well, oh, before I get to all the the not so fun stuff, I've talked about her before. Nicole Dennis Ben is a lesbian author from Jamaica. She wrote the book, Here Comes the Sun. Her second book is coming out in June, I believe. Don't quote me. Maybe July. June, July. One of the two. It's called Patsy. I'm here for that. I can't wait to get it. I haven't back ordered, but I'll get around to it. I still haven't finished reading Here Comes the Sun, not for lack of interest, but because 
I can't focus on things lately. Like me and sitting down and reading for a long period of time, I've been doing a whole lot of different things. So I'm I'm just all over the place. I need to figure my life out. Um, Florida. <sighs> Florida. There's a Florida bill that would make abortions illegal after the fetal heartbeat is detected. I have feelings about people trying to dictate what people should do with their bodies. But, I mean, don't, don't make me start sounding... <laughs> Ugh, whatever. Um, there's a new bill trying to make its way through Florida legislature that would make it illegal for women to get an abortion after the fetal heartbeat is detected. If passed, the bill titled HB 235 would make it a felony for any person who knowingly or purposefully performs or induces an abortion on a pregnant woman with the specific intent of causing or abetting the termination of the life of an unborn human being whose fetal heartbeat has been detected. This bill... Of course, was sponsored by a Republican, <laughs> Mike Hill, who, uh, first of all, he thought that it was going to take, what is it, 18 days for you to be able to detect the heartbeat. I mean, if that's the case, like everybody going to prison because you know how many people don't even know that they're pregnant till like two months down the line, like longer than that, like a month and change, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know what he's talking about, like whatever. But it actually takes six weeks to detect the heartbeat of a fetus. So that's where that is. Current Florida law, though, states that you're allowed to get an abortion up to 24 weeks. So the new bill is going to be six weeks as opposed to 24 weeks. That's if it's passed. If it's passed. I have to check and see if that has been passed or what's going on with that. Because that was, that was a couple... When was this? Um, the 15th of January was when this was um, published. Another thing about news and government, this government shutdown. Apparently on Friday, there was a lift on the government shutdown, but not, don't don't get excited. Y'all still not getting y'all checks. <laughs> well, the IRS checks anyways, not y'all food stamps and none of that. They're paying some of the workers because it would have been about 35 days since the shutdown. So it's entering into its second month and people are like, because government workers, what they get paid like once a month or like, so I don't know. I think it's like the first and the 15th or some shit like that. They get paid like, it's a weird schedule, but it's a set schedule. So this would have been their second regularly scheduled paycheck on Friday that they would have missed due to the shutdown. Some flights been rerouted. I know they said something about flights to New York have been canceled. Um, because, I mean, air traffic controllers aren't getting paid either. Like, niggas, y'all expecting them to work without pay like you know what i'm saying and this is the longest government shutdown in the history so this is causing staffing shortages because niggas got bills to pay not everybody has savings like some people live check to check and i guess the rich ass president don't understand that because he don't know what it means to live check to check so that's one thing i forgot to mention by the way that nicole dennis ben the author of patsy this is so off topic wow i just jumped she's also in l magazine on the front row page you know with all the fashionista stuff shout out to her i'm so proud of her i follow her and she's so amazing but yeah back to the government shutdown like Y'all are really thinking that this is just your IRS taxes, like IRS taxes, like refund and all that. Like, no, like people are out here not getting paid to go to work. Like I'm showing up to work every day knowing that I'm not getting my check when I'm supposed to get my check. You know what I'm saying? Like they lifted a little bit. So some people got their checks or whatever, but still like it's still not fully open. And in reference to the... um what is it, air traffic controllers, I have to big up um, Christina Chang, which is a footballer for the reggae girls. She's an air traffic controller, and she's currently conditioning for FIFA World Cup, and she's also not getting paid. And on top of that, she's supposed to be planning a wedding at the same time. Like, I know sis is stressed. Lucky for her, though, her fiancé is supportive. He's a footballer also, so he's he understands all that goes into her practicing and being away and missing work. Like, th imagine this, right? You work for air traffic control. You're thinking, yo, I got a government job. I'm lit, right? Bet. You fucking qualified for the FIFA World Cup. Like, you out here, regular girls, shout out to y'all. Then now, uh, government shut down. Like, no, fuck that. You're planning a wedding. And typical, you know, she's doing most of the planning. Of course, the fiancé is chipping in, but she is planning the wedding. Yo, I know she's stressed. They don't have kids. She's in her 30s, but that's 
one of the things that they always talk about with women in the workforce and all this, like women have to put their whole lives on hold when it comes to being a career woman. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have to choose between do you want to have a family and like maintain, like I don't want to say maintain a household, but be like wife and kids or like husband and kids. Well, well, whichever. (laughs) Or do you want to be a career woman? And so often like women have to choose between the two because honestly speaking, Y'all think if Oprah had a child, that child would feel any kind of attention or love? Or do you think Oprah would be as big as she is if she had a child or children? Like, it's a sad, sad, sad fucking thing. I'm just happy that, like, her fiancé is understanding of the fact that, yo, I gotta go to work, my nigga. Like, I gotta go make this coin. I gotta go play this ball. I gotta go, you know, control air traffic, like, all of this. But with everything going on... She had to put her wedding plans on hold because she's conditioning for FIFA, like I said. And now on top of that, government shut down. Paychecks ain't coming in like they're supposed to. Like I said before, her fiancé is a baller, so he does understand the struggles of that. But he is excited for both wedding and FIFA. So, I mean, at least he's supportive. And that is, like, the biggest thing. Like, you can feel like your life is, like in shambles on the floor dead and having support from someone you actually give a fuck about like is big and i say by someone you give a fuck about because maybe people that they're supporting you that you just be like "Mm, okay cute but when you care about someone and they care equally about you and your passion like that's a big fucking thing so shout out to her um i'm trying to see what else i had to talk about on here there's a couple things I talked about St. Vincent. Da, 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 da. I know this is bad. I'm professional. I don't care. Fight me. Um, I talked about J-Flag. Oh, Jamaicans for Jamaica. They're still accepting donations. For those of you who may not have heard, Diana Mitchie is doing a GoFundMe for KPH, Kingston Public Hospital, and Jubilee Hospital in Jamaica. I mentioned this a couple of times on a few other episodes. Please, if you care, if you have it, donate. Like I said, the same thing with J-Flag. One dollar, five dollar, five hundred dollars, whatever you can afford, send on the money. It's GoFundMe.com slash Jamaicans, the number four for Jamaica. So it's Jamaicans, number four, Jamaica. Um, everything is spelled how it is, except four is the number four. So if you have anything, if you can, whatever, send a donation. It would be greatly appreciated. Every little bit helps. So that's that on that on that (laughs) this is me running out of shit to talk well not really I, i can go on and on about random shit oh speaking of what is the issue okay let me get me get on my soapbox i'm gonna try not to so i had an incident at work the other day where and yesterday actually this is probably like the day before whatever where an older man came into my store come into the pharmacy and asked me if I'm going to do his blood pressure, if I want to check his blood pressure. Now, mind you, this is a self-serve machine, right? I have a sense of humor when things are funny. Like, if it's not funny, I'm not laughing at it. I don't laugh at men's jokes that aren't funny to make them feel better. I don't care how you, what you want to call me for that, but I'm not here to make you feel better about yourself. That's not my purpose on this earth. That's not what I intend to do. That's not what I am intended for. I don't know what my purpose is as a whole as of yet, but I know damn well It's not to make men feel better about themselves for whatever insecurities or whatever fuckery that they've been subjected to or feel like they've got the privilege of women doing. Like, no, I'm I'm not it. So mind my black ass business, man is like, oh, you want to come check my pressure for me? And I just like look to him because I was like, okay, whatever. You know, he's trying to be cute. Let me mind my business and maybe he'll go away. He says it again. And this time he touches my shoulder. Now, I'm at work, so I'm not going to cuss you to filth like I want to. And I was just like, no, you can ask the pharmacist if you need help. That's not what I'm supposed to. It's not my job. He got offended that I said that. Um, oh, my second problem with this. There was a child with him, a little girl that was probably about 12. 13. I wouldn't give her more than 16, right? And in my head, I'm like, if I laugh at this, am I encouraging her to think that it is okay for her to participate? Because... In real life, despite how old I am, nobody ever guesses my name correct. Like, unless you know me and, like, you've never known my age and, like, you, like, see how I am as a person, you'd probably be able to guess the ballpark of my age. For the most part, people think I'm, like, early 20s, like, 20, like, I lie and say I'm 22, whatever. People usually think I'm, like, 21, 22, like, maybe 19, you know what I'm saying? So even if I am 22, even if I am 25, even if I'm 35, I'm still way too young for this man. This man is old as shit. 
probably about 60, 50 years old. Like, regardless, I'm not, I'm not dating nobody that's 20 years older than me. I'm not flirting with you either. Like, that's disgusting. Like, no, like, no. So I'm not going to let this little girl see me interacting with you in a way that makes you feel better about yourself. Like, you don't understand things impact people. Like, granted, she might be old enough to make her own decisions, but these things impact the way people grow. You're putting forth this effort to make it seem like I'm such a bad person. And then he got upset. Like, he got pissed. He said, talking about I'm rude and this is not customer service and da-da-da-da. Oh, obviously not in my face. Like, he was walking away saying this and then he, he done check his blood pressure. In the back of my head, I'm like, this why you got to check your blood pressure because you're getting worked up over bullshit, my nigga. Like, really? But anyways, he went all the way up to the front and went and go told the cashier, like, oh, she's rude. Is that the manager? And he was like, no. <laughs> but he was like yo he was really upset i was like dude like you're gross and the thing about it that made me die was like the cashier was like yo and he was doing that in front of a girl like up in front of his daughter and i was like exactly my point i'm glad you see my point like dude first of all why the fuck are you touching me that's first and foremost and secondly if you want to ask my pharmacist she's jamaican as fuck and she would have been like what you can't read like the instructions are there why are you trying to flirt with me somebody's probably gonna listen to this and be like yo you're too sensitive it wasn't that serious but dog don't fucking touch me you're old as shit. Don't flirt with me. Like, don't do it. And girls, doing that uncomfortable laughing shit is enabling people to think that shit is fucking cute and okay. It's not okay. Stop laughing at these niggas when they make you uncomfortable. Stop. For real. Like, that ass. Because if more girls stop laughing when they're uncomfortable, guess what? Maybe that'll diminish the amount of people that you do this weird, creepy shit to. Like, I saw this meme that said when a man is making you uncomfortable but you can't really say anything because you're scared he'll kill you for hurting his feelings. Bitch, I was in broad motherfucking daylight inside of a store. Run up. <laughs> I'm using the store as fucking uh, security. I understand certain situations where that is a possibility. But if you're able to just like, you know you can back out of that situation without going. <laughs> Don't. Just be like, mm. it, yo, that me and the mm and the face. <laughs> listen especially as i've gotten older like i've never tried to participate in that like i can remember doing that like when i was younger with like guys my age or like guys that are probably like a little bit older than me or something but like grown ass men like i've never really been the type to be around grown ass men like that like shit like that happens to me at work not in like my everyday life outside of work, like my personal life. It's always at work because that's the only time that I'm ever really one on one or like in the presence of grown, like older men like that. Because I don't really, I'm um, no. <laughs> and so if anything, I'd be around like older women or from with like old people. It's like with family. But and I, thankfully, I can knock on wood and say I've never had any family members make me feel uncomfortable in a sense where. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I had to do that, thankfully. I know a lot of people haven't been as fortunate, but y'all need to stop. Don't laugh at them pervy-ass jokes. Don't let those pervy-ass niggas feel like it's okay to flirt with you when they got you by 20, 30, 40 fucking years. Like, that's nasty, son. Like, ugh. Anyways, I'm going to wrap it up on that note. Um, Shout out to everybody doing good things. You know what I'm saying? All the women out here kicking ass. I'm here for every single last one of y'all. Um, if I sound delirious, it's because I gave up bread and rice and pasta and there's some macaroni and cheese that's waiting for me. But I had spinach because I'm trying to learn discipline. <laughs> Anyways, I don't have much else for y'all. So if you want to tell a friend, tell a friend. Don't forget if you have any poetry, any short stories, anything you want to share or have read on the show. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to submit them to askpointless at gmail.com. Some of y'all slide in my DMs on Instagram because that's usually where I'm active. I'm not really that active on the Pointless Talks Twitter. I'm active on my personal Twitter, but uh, if you want to get at me, it's Pointless Talks on all the social media outlets. That's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I'm on all the streaming things. iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, YouTube. And don't get upset with me. I still haven't gotten past like episode 23 on YouTube, but I'm getting there. Google Play Music, Spotify, all the things. If you like us, rate us, leave feedback. Leave feedback, leave feedback, leave feedback. Keeping a bad mind feelings, I'm to in a self. Send positive feedback. If you don't like us, just, you know, keep moving. <laughs> and just like every other week, whether you got here on purpose or by fate, thank you again for tuning in to the Pointless Talks podcast. Mama T forever. I want to start off